Good Wednesday, First Presbyterian Church family and friends. This is Pastor Matt, and it's time for us to come together online to look at Psalm 47. Of course, tonight at 6.30, we are uh, reintroducing in the church life our midweek prayer meeting service. And so if you feel comfortable in coming, uh, we would love to see you, and we would love for you to join our voices in prayer. Uh, we have longed to be back uh, in our midweek prayer meeting service. It is a beautiful gathering of the saints to come and lift up our needs and our requests and our petitions up to a heavenly father who knows what we need and answers our needs in his will's time, but also just to praise our God for the good things that he has done, is doing, and will do for the sake of his people and for his church. And so we hope that you will come if you are comfortable in, in coming. Uh, but nonetheless, we wanted to, to still give this online offering of a Wednesday devotional for those who may not be coming this evening. And so we're going to turn our attention to Psalm 47. Let's pray to God that he would give us ears to hear before we read our text. Father in heaven, we do Thank you for the opportunity to come to your word, and we know that your word is good for us, and it is your way of teaching us about yourself. It's a, your way of teaching us about ourselves. It's your way of conforming and changing us to be more like your son. And so, Father, give us ears to hear you speak this evening. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would use this word to convict us and, and to change us, enable us to put to death sin in our life and to pursue Christ's likeness for the glory of thy name. And so, Father, we pray that you would speak loudly, for we, your servants, are listening. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, we pray. Amen. Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud sounds of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves, Selah. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Well, here it is in Psalm 47 that the sons of Korah write to the choir master a song that is to be sung by the people of God. And of course, it is indeed, as you have seen as we read it, a song of praise. It's a song of praise and adoration. It's a song of joy and, and love for the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who is Yahweh himself. And of course, Yahweh is that covenant name of God that, that as we worship, we're being reminded that God is true to his people, that God is king for his people, that he is the father of his people, that he cares for them and remembers his promises despite their faithfulness. He is faithful. And so as we celebrate, as we sing God being king of all the earth, we, we sing a, a song that is full of joy. It is full of joy and adoration for the king over all the earth is our God. So here it is that actually Dr. Kelly many years ago preached this psalm and he called this psalm the joy of being on the winning side. Now, well, I think that the reason why he uh, entitled this sermon this way is because before this psalm is Psalm 46. And of course, Psalm 46 is that infamous song uh, where uh, Martin Luther penned, a mighty fortress is our God after. And so it's all about trouble and God's sustaining hand in trouble. But here it is in Psalm 47 that that trouble doesn't seem to be around. Yes, it's implied, but joy doesn't, trouble doesn't seem to be around. The heart is just full of joy. 
And there's really two things I want you to see here in this psalm. I have my notes here before me. And the first one is uh, the joy we need. The joy we need. Because like I said, within this psalm, there is not much trouble to be seen. Uh, however, when we read it, you know, chronologically after Psalm 46, we know that there will be trouble in the Christian life. And that the only hope in our trouble in the Christian life is God himself. Therefore, we need to have that joy in our everyday life that Christ brings so that when these troubles come, we can often be reminded or constantly be reminded that it is the Lord who keeps us safe. And I think that's exactly one of the points that the sons of Korah is trying to make before us in Psalm 47. That despite the circumstance, because remember the sons of Korah wrote Psalm 46 as well, but despite the circumstance, there is a reason for us to clap our hands. There is a reason for us to shout to God with loud sounds of joy. Because he is a great king over all the earth. It is his sovereignty that we celebrate in our praise because despite our circumstances, he is working for what? For the glory of his name and the good of his people. Isn't that the promise, the great promise of Romans chapter 8, that all things are working for the good of God's people and the glory of his name? And so despite the trouble that may assail us, there is a reason for our hearts to still be full of joy because all nations are under his feet. He has subdued his enemies up under his people. He has chosen a heritage for his people. Uh, he is uh, indeed the pride of Jacob and he loves us. So all of these things are being recited for us because uh, or so that we can see that the joy in our heart that only God can bring is the joy that we need in this Christian life. Because let's be frank, as we are pilgrims in this strange land, as we are Christians in a world that is not our home, but we're simply just passing through this world, we encounter many, many things that bring us despair. We encounter many things that bring us anxiety. We encounter many things that bring us frustration. The list can go on and on and on. I don't know the details of what you may be facing this evening, but, but you know the trouble that this life can bring. And the psalmist says the joy that we need is a joy that says, despite the circumstances, I'm going to sing praises to God, for he is sovereign over any circumstance that I may face. And doesn't that change the way, beloved? Well, doesn't that, that change the way that we, that we attend a funeral? Doesn't that change the way that we prepare for major surgery? Doesn't that even change the way that we deal with a bad Monday at work? That we can say our joy is in the Lord and nothing that this world has to offer, but it's solely in the Lord. Therefore, I have something to praise him about. Because what is reminded to us at a funeral? That there's life after death. And if there is life after death, the joy that God brings says that I can live forever in perfect prosperity with my God if I trust in him. And if I trust in him, he is preparing a place for me even now so that I may be with him forever. Joy. Major surgery. How does, how does joy in the Lord change that? It reminds us that, that we're in the palm of his hand. And if, is, and if we're in the palm of the hand of a sovereign God, nothing is going to catch him by surprise while we're in a deep, medicated sleep. Nothing's going to catch him off guard. 
all things are going to work for our good and his glory and we can rest perfectly in him without the anxiety, without the frustration, without the doubt, without the worry. We can face that major surgery with confidence that God will that God will ultimately protect us. What about that bad day of work? How does joy in the Lord change that bad day at work? Well, it's just a passing day that's bringing us closer and closer to glory. And as we lay our head down to sleep that night, we can know that God's mercies are new every morning. And so we can have a joy. And that's the joy that we need. And But we would be amiss if we didn't see that the sons of Korah in Psalm 47 are telling us where this source of joy is as well. So not only are they talking about the need for joy, but the source of joy. I'm going to change my color here so that we are clearly distinguishing between the two points. But you notice, don't you, for the Lord, the Most High, God, um, He, talking about God, He again, He, God, Lord, God, and I think we get the point. That all through this psalm, all through this song that we are to sing, we are being pointed to God, the King, the one who is praised, the one who is sovereign, the, the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham. All the shields of the earth belong to God. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. It's God who gives us this joy. And so we praise. We praise him knowing that he is implanted with us a joy that cannot be shaken by this world because it's a joy that is eternally in him. It's a joy that finds its source in him. And if he's sovereign over any circumstance, if he's good in all of our troubles, then we can have a joy deep down in our bones that sing praises. One of the greatest illustrations of this, I think, is there in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Because here it is that Jehoshaphat, a, a good king of the kingdom, this is after King David, uh, but he is a good king. Uh, but there's many who are standing against him for his trust in the Lord. But here it is in chapter 20 that we are shown what he does in the midst of his trouble. Starting in verse 3 and reading through verse 7 of Second Chronicles chapter 20. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? And so you see it here. They're, they're calling out to God and and reciting the good things that he has done for the sake of his people already, talking about that, that redemptive history that they have celebrated and told from generation to generation. Haven't you promised to be our Lord Yahweh? Haven't you promised to be our God? All the way back to Abraham. Haven't you given us this land as our inheritance? Haven't you uh, promised that you would be with us? And then there in verse 12. O oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Here it is. They realize there is nothing good uh, or powerful within them, uh, within themselves. And so they come saying, it, it is you in who we trust. It is you in who we trust. Uh, rely on, are you going to help us? And of course, they have already called out 
and reminded God of the covenants, right? You have promised you will. Are you going to do it? And they speak with, with total confidence. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Verse 15. And he said, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord to you, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And so God speaks through his prophet to Jehoshaphat and all the people of Judah, and he reminds them, yes, God will do it. And, and if God is on your side, who can stand against you? And if God is on your side, Oh, Judah, this is not your battle. It's the Lord's. Isn't that so pleasing? Uh, and, and just and just brings about a confidence and a joy within the heart of the believer because these circumstances, these troubles, these sufferings that we face is not our battle to fight. It is the Lord's battle. And if the Lord is fighting for us, our victory is... Sure. Look at verse 17 if you've opened your Bibles with me. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position. And see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Isn't that awesome? You won't need to fight this battle. For the Lord is going to fight it. So just stand firm, stay put, go out and watch the Lord at work. Verse 22. And when they began to sing praise, to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so that they were routed. Now, I love that phrase, so that they were routed. That means they were utterly destroyed. And as the people, notice, notice what they did. Notice as the people sang praises to God with much joy in their heart, the Lord went before them and fought the battle and won the battle in their place. That is exactly what Psalm 47 is talking about this very evening for us. He's telling us, the joy that we need is the joy that only the Lord can give. And if we have joy in the Lord, if we can sing and praise and, and, and be a people of glad hearts, because God has given us that joy, then despite our circumstances, we can, we can rely on the sovereign God. And if we can rely on the sovereign God, we cannot help but to praise and to worship. You know, um, we probably want to get, get to experience in this life enemies surrounding us like Jehoshaphat and Judah did. But you know what we can understand as New Testament believers? That our greatest enemy, sin, death, and the devil have been defeated already at the cross of Christ. And if we can see that victory, if we can see the victory of the, of the empty tomb, what is our response of, verse, or of Psalm 47? It is to clap. It is to shout. It is to sing. It is to praise because we are gods. And so we do not need to fight this battle. We just need to stand firm and have joy. And there is much joy in being on the winning side. Thank you for being with us. We hope to see you soon. Blessings.